Arch Legends is a fantasy battle game, a, a, a trading card game, so they, they'll build on the cards, you can buy later ones and build your army, but essentially when you sit down you are the commander of a, um, an army of Arch Legends, so you've got these characters here that come down onto the board. This is the board and you're orchestrating them over the battlefield which are made up of these different types of cards. So you've got uh, the lava area, you've got mountainous areas, water areas, fields, all kinds of different things that have their own implications. These are set out at random. As you move your players in, you'll be battling against each other, trying to knock down each other's points to essentially win the game and have the most morale, uh, which is essentially like life points, they call it in this game, morale. Uh, and that is the game, so we'll, go, we'll get stuck into it, I'll show you what comes in the box. Um, you can check out on their Kickstarter exactly what they're going to send out for their base packs, different pledges. But I imagine it's going to be very similar to this. Oh, that's exciting. Some a seal. There we go. What's in here? Hey there, thank you for taking the time to look through our TGC. CCG, uh, you've been a big help with our launch and we'll really and really appreciate it. We are excited to collaborate with you, Felicia. Awesome. Here we have some tokens, pin badges, and things for making that in it. This looks to me like a play mat. Nice. Then we've got two decks of cards ready to play. Let's have a look at one of these. Oh, we've got a shiny. Got a few shinies. A couple of extra cards there. Is that a... Oh, there's the rules. This is what we want to see. Okay. So in the deck, you've got three types of cards. So I'll just quickly briefly go over those and then we'll explore them in a little bit more detail. So uh, the first part of your cards are you have these arch legends. So these are the characters. They're fantasy characters that you will be battling with on the battlefield. So you have characters like Sir Lancelot, Sir Galahad, uh, Aladdin, Thor. So all kinds of different uh, characters there. So they're your arch legends. Uh, you've also got your support deck. So in your support deck, you'll find tactical cards, skill cards, equip cards, chaos cards uh, that all do different things. So for example, uh, Feast is going to gain you one morale. This is essentially the life point of you rather than the people on the board. Uh, so there's different kinds of ones. We can explore those in a moment. So they're your support deck. Finally, you have your terrain cards. Uh, your terrain cards are made up of different cards like uh, you've got the Lava Land, you've got the field, you've got the mountain, um, I think there's one more, uh, and uh, you've got the ocean uh, card as well. So they will make up your different terrain, and each one of those has different implications on the board when you land on them, so we'll come back to those in a moment. Finally, you have your base card. Uh, this is how we start the game, so if we go through that now, we'll start to get it set up. Your base card looks like this, and is identified by this symbol at the bottom. This is the first card that you will play when you start the game. So there's different kinds of base cards available and there will be as the game progresses, but for the base pack, both of these decks are exactly the same. So both of the base cards will go here at the center position. Now once both base cards are played, we can move on to the terrain cards. You will select 11 terrain cards from your deck, shuffle them, and then lay them out on the deck like this. And the other player will do the same. Once all the battle cards are laid out for the terrain, you can flip them all over and decide who goes first. As we've decided that I'm going to go first, uh, I get to play any uh, terrain card in the centre position of my choice. And that's the setup. Now typically speaking from this position, we're going to need some dice. However, 
in this introductory beta pack, they haven't included any dice, but what they have done is given us a handy dandy online tool that we can use with our mobile phone to score the different battle points. Naughty cat. So whether you are using the online tool on your phone or if you're using the dice, the idea is to set the morale uh, to 10. They are your personal life points, not the life points of the characters on the battlefield. The characters on the battlefield are essentially protecting you from being hit yourself. And that's the plan. So the idea of the game to win is to take your opponent's morale down from 10 to 0. So to start the game, we're going to draw 7 cards from the support deck. Three, four. Seven cards from your support deck, so they are your skill cards, equip, uh, chaos, uh, and tactic cards. So they're the cards in your support deck. So we've got seven of those. Uh, at this point, we're then going to bring in three of your arch legends uh, from the top three deck. So we're going to bring those in, and they sit on your base here. In the rules, it does say that if you don't like the cards that you've drawn, you can mulligan once. You can put them back in the deck, shuffle them, and draw the same number of cards again, and replay this setup. So typically speaking, we'd have three dice here. Um, if not, you're using your uh, online link to the support. Uh, you'll have three sections here. So you'll have knowledge, zeal, and morale. So morale is obviously your power. Um, the knowledge and zeal, we're going to talk about those now. Alternatively, you'll, as I say, you'll have three separate dice for those. So we're going to start with the knowledge. So with the knowledge, you'll have a D6 dice, so a dice that has six sides on it, uh, to go there. What we're going to do is, at this point, we're going to look at our legendary characters. On the top left of the card, you'll see a number here. Uh, this represents the knowledge. So you'll take the combined amounts of their knowledge, and add that to your d6 dice. So for us, we've got a 1, a 2 and a 1, so we're going to set our d6 to 4. Unless we're using the online link, we're going to set that to 4. Okay, so at the start of your turn, you're going to draw a card from either of the decks, so that's either a legend, uh, arc legend character, or uh, it could be from your support deck. Um, at this point, we're also going to reset our knowledge, um, our knowledge dice, or on, let's say online, um, that's going to be reset to the combined number that we showed a moment ago. So if you're on your next turn and you, and you use those on your previous turn, you'll start them again. So once you've done that, you're set up and ready to go for the next phase, which is the support phase. So at this point, um, you're going to look at your cards and see what you're going to bring into play. You, you've got a few options here. Uh, one option is you could bring in another um, uh, Arch Legend, but the maximum that you can have on the field is determined by the battle limit here on the bottom of the card. So you can see that our current battlefield limit is three arch legends. And because we've already got three arch legends in play, we're not gonna bring any of those out. Alternatively, if we didn't have any players out, at this stage of the game, we could essentially bring in as many as we want up until that limit of three. So let's say we brought three in, we would then have to include those knowledge amounts to update our overall knowledge on the D6 dice. So the option of bringing out your Arch Legends doesn't actually cost anything to do with your morale, your zeal, or your knowledge. Alternatively, if you wanted to use one of your tactic or skill cards or support cards, they also have a cost to them as well, and you can see that represented on the card. If you choose to use the tactical ability on one of your Legends, you can do this once per turn, and the details are given in the bottom of the card here. But to do this, it will cost you the knowledge represented at the top. So you will need to deduct this from your knowledge dice. Alternatively, if you choose to use one of your cards from your support deck, so an equip card or a skill card or one of these, um, these will also cost you money to play. These will also cost you your knowledge to play. So you see they're quite expensive here. Um, given that at this point our dice is at four knowledge, that would use our entire turn to play this card in this phase. So in this support phase, looking at my hand, I can see that I've got an archer here. It's going to cost me three knowledge, which I can afford because I'm currently on four. I've got an archer legend in play, so I'm going to attach my uh, uh, Kirin bow to the archer character. So that will go underneath the character's card here costing me three of my knowledge dice, leaving me one, and we can then enter into the next phase. 
So we've replenished our knowledge, we've then brought our cards into play costing us particular knowledge and we're moving into the next phase which is the battle phase. At this point you've got two plays here. So of those options you've got two options. You could either move a legend um, one space, sideways, forwards or diagonally. Or you can use your tactical abilities that you've put into play. Um, if you're moving, you're going to want to consider the terrain. Now the terrain had different implications, so let's look at those now. Moving around on the board, you've got four different types of terrain that have different implications. If your legend moves onto a, a field open area, it's a neutral area and nothing will take place. It's fairly safe for your legend to be. If your legend moves into a lava area, it's going to lose one damage for each start of the turn that it ends up on this space. So the moment that you move on the space, your legend is going to lose one damage. And if it's still there on the next turn, it's going to lose an additional damage for every turn that it remains on that space. Legends can't move into mountainous areas, so this is going to act as a block. If your legend moves into a water area, it's going to lose one defence for each turn that it's spent on the water. So the moment that he moves onto the water, he's got one less defence to defend himself. And if he's still on the water on his next turn, that's going to come into play also. Looking at our board here with our options, if I move to the right, I cannot do that because it's a mountainous area. If I move to the left, I'm going to lose some health. If I move diagonally to the left, I'm going to lose some defence. However, we've got a field here, so I'm going to move my legend into this space here. When moving into spaces, don't forget to carry over its equipment that's been attached to it. So once you've moved over with your equipment, that's resolved that action. Another option you can take for an action in this phase is to attack. When attacking, you need to make sure that the enemy legend is within the range of your legend's attack space. Your legend's attack range, which is demonstrated on the top right of the card. When attacking with a normal attack, the legend is gonna deal the amount of damage that's shown on the bottom right of the card here. So if I was attacking another le uh, legend, they would receive three damage to their legend character. Point to note, be aware, if you are attacking an enemy legend and their health doesn't decrease to zero, they can defend with an attack of their own. If you're not making a normal attack, uh, as shown on the bottom right, you can use a skill attack which is demonstrated in the centre here. These cannot be defended. Don't forget this particular legend character was equipped with a bow. This means that if it's using a skill attack, it's going to deal two extra damage. If your legend doesn't have a skill attack, you can use a skill card which will cost knowledge. Skill cards have the same attack range as your legend unless otherwise stated and can only be used by the type of legend demonstrated in the bottom left of the card here. So this can only be used by an archer. So when attacking or defending, if any of the legend's health uh, moves to zero, that legend then gets placed into the dead pool and you will lose morale based on the morale indicated in the top left of the card. For this particular card, your morale is going to go down by two. Once the battle phase is resolved, you enter into a final option of a support phase, so you can bring in more legends, tactics or equipment. If your legend has used its tactical ability in a previous phase, it can only use it once per turn, so won't be able to use it in this phase. Once that's resolved, the last phase is to look at how many cards you've got in your hand. You can have a maximum of eight, so if you've got any more than eight, they need to be retired into the retired deck. If any of your legends have issued an attack throughout any of the phases, for each attack, your zeal will go up one. So finally, there's only a couple more things to note before we go and look at the gameplay. The first thing I want to talk about is legendizing. Now, legendizing happens to any of your legendary characters. Uh, once this is played, your legend character can flip over and their statistics are improved by legendizing here. The details are on the bottom. If you're stacking cards on the same area of terrain, it's the top card that's in play, so you can only attack with, or defend with, or be attacked by the card on the top. So for example, if you've got two legends in this space here, it's only the, the top one that's in play. The final thing to note on that is your base. 
Now, if you have no other cards stacked on top of your base and your base is open to attack, you will personally receive damage to your morale rather than the place itself. To prevent this from happening, you'll want to keep one of your legendary characters on top of your base to defend it. That is the basics of the game. These are all the bits here that you get with the base pack. Um, the Kickstarter's just gone live, um, so I'm just going to open that up now. Um, we can have a look at what the different pledges entail. Um, I'll put the link in there, you can check that out for yourself. Um, so that's good, so that's up and live. Um, these other bits here, they've got a ton of bonus things in the pledges as well. So you've got like pin badges, got a few stickers, some extra tokens, so they're really nice. Um, I've had a quick look at the Kickstarter. Um, looking at the different packs and things that are available, obviously being a trading card game, there are so many different options for the type of armies that you want to build, uh, the type of characters that you get in there. So we've talked about some of those um, in the deck already. So that's really nice. Um, the amount of decks that you can get varies on the pledges that you make as well. So that's available. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the actual gameplay so you can see an overview of the gameplay. Um, other than that, that's everything. I hope you enjoy it. Check out their Kickstarter, as I say. Um, and if it's the sort of game for you, if you like trading card games, then this is a great one to get involved with.